and welcome to church today. It's great to have you with us. Wherever you're coming from, whether you're old or young, it's great to have everybody with us. Except, if you're coming to the face-to-face -face service this afternoon at 3.30 and you've booked in for that, you'll know whether you're coming or not. You need to stop. Stop now. You need to switch off your TV or your computer and you need to step away because lots of what we do um, in this service will be the same as the service um, this afternoon on Sunday. So just switch off and walk away. Otherwise, it's great to have you with us. Now, today is Harvest Sunday and we're celebrating all that God has done for us over the last year. And we're going to be thinking about that a little bit more shortly. We're learning a new song this morning and we've got a piece in there from Hope Nottingham about what they've been doing. So our service is going to look a little bit different today and it might even be a little bit longer, but that's okay because you can always stop and come back to it later. Um, and let's just see how we get on. But we're learning a new song and that's going to take a little bit of a while too. So before we get started with our service today, we need to start in the same way that we always do because I know how much I need to have a stretch um, in the mornings. So I think we should all stretch together. So let's stretch up to the ceiling as high as we can, stretch out in front and we need to wiggle our fingers and we need to stretch our legs and wiggle our toes because we're learning a new song today called Beautiful World. And Beautiful World is a song that I really like and Alex and Lucy really like too. And we used to do it at the old school where we were before. Um, and we wanted to share that with you today on this Harvest Sunday. So that it's an action song. So you need to spring up and I'm going to show you the actions now. So the actions kind of follow fairly logically through with the words, but I'm gonna show them to you. So from the crocodile, so nice crocodile, to the kangaroo, because kangaroos hold their hands like this, to the birds and bumblebees, from the elephants, nice long nose, to the polar bears, rah, to the spiders, can you make nice spiders with your hands, and the fleas, and the fleas are jumping. Okay, so that's the first verse. And the chorus just says, it's amazing the wonders of creation and we all just want to say and wave your hands now thank you because that's a sign for thank you for the morning light thank you for the moonlit night thank you for the sunshine and the rain thank you for the joy you bring thank you god for everything it's a beautiful world you've made. So that's the chorus, and that will repeat a couple of times. Then the second verse says, from the snow upon the mountain tops, to the fruit upon the trees, from the jungles to the desert sand, and the fish beneath the sea. And then it carries on um, with the chorus again. It's amazing, the wonders of creation, and we've all a part to play. Thank you for the morning light. Thank you for the moonlit night. Thank you for the sunshine and the rain. Thank you for the joy you bring. Thank you, God, for everything. It's a beautiful world you've made. So let's jump up where we are. Let's sing and dance and worship together on this Harvest Sunday.
Flora. We didn't see you last week because you were a bit busy, but I have to say, you look a little bit cross today. Are you cross? Oh, I think Flora's very cross indeed. Do you want to tell me why you're cross? You had a letter from Cousin Fern. It doesn't sound like a reason to be cross. Oh dear. Flora today is cross because Cousin Fern has sent a letter. Now if you remember back a few weeks ago, Cousin Fern went back to go and live with Granny Frog and we miss her but we're glad that she got there safely and is having a good time back at Frog School. But Flora is cross because Cousin Fern in her letter talked about all the things that she has. She talked about um, that she gets driven to Frog School in a special car called a limo. Do you go, you don't go, no, you don't go to Frog School in a limo. That she has loads of toys and a brand new computer and that she gets to eat Nutella and honey and chocolate all the time. And you're cross because you don't have all of those things, is that right? Okay. Now, it's interesting because today is Harvest Sunday and on Harvest Sunday, we celebrate all that God has provided for us. Now, in the past, that was about crops and fields and farming. But today, we don't live where there's lots of crops and fields and farming, do we? No, I can't see any fields out of our window. But we do have so much because we have shops with food in that we have homes to live in. We have so much to be thankful for. Now, our story today, Flora, helpfully, is the story of how God provided for one person. But it perhaps wasn't how they would have expected or how they wanted. Um, so Abigail is reading our story today, which is all about Elijah and the ravens. So shall we go and see what our story has to say? And then we'll have a bit more of a chat. Is that OK? Elijah and the ravens. If David was the best king God's people have ever had, then Ahab was one of the worst. He didn't listen to God at all. No, he worshipped a statue called Baal. And what was worse, he made a lot of God's people do the same. God was not happy that his people had replaced him with a God who was nothing more than a pile of sticks and stones. So he whispered into the ear of a prophet called Elijah, a man who had not forgotten him. Tell King Ahab that what he is doing is wrong. Tell him that I will stop the rain from falling until he worships. He stops worshipping Baal. Elijah passed God's message on to Ahab. But Ahab just laughed. That is until it stopped raining. Now King Ahab was angry with Elijah. So angry he wanted to kill him. So God told Elijah to hide in a deep rate ravine east of the Jordan River. But how will I live? asked Elijah. Out of in the wilderness and all of my own on my own. I've sorted that, God answered. I'm the real God after all, remember? Not some statue made of sticks and stones. There's a brook that runs down the middle of the ravine. You can drink from that and I've asked a few of my feathery friends to feed you. Elijah was not sure what God meant, but he trusted to take care of him. He crossed the Jordan and hid in the ravine. He drank from the brook just like God had told him to. And on the very first morning, some of God's feathery friends came calling. They were ravens and in their beaks and their claws, they carried meat and bread for his breakfast. Elijah ate until he was full. And when evening came, the ravens came cawing again with more bread and meat for his tea. And Elijah so, and so Elijah hid safely and never went hungry. God fed Elijah in his Raven Ravine restaurant because he was, after all, the real God and not some statue made of sticks and stones. So Flora, wasn't our story read beautifully for us today? And there's a lot going on in there, isn't there? because we have King Ahab who it says is a bad king and we have Elijah the prophet and Elijah hadn't forgotten God 
but actually King Ahab and lots of other people had. And so King Ahab worshipped a statue, which is a funny thing to do, isn't it? This statue made of sticks and stones and that obviously it wasn't God at all. It was just a statue. Um, but Elijah was told by God that God was not happy about this. And so Elijah went and told King Ahab and King Ahab got really angry and he said, you know what, Elijah, I want to kill you. Um, so he, so God told Elijah to run away and to go and hide in a deep ravine. So which is like a kind of deep ditch um, east of the river. And that ditch was in a place called Kerith. Now, it doesn't say that in the story that Abigail read to us, but Kerith means drought. So Elijah must have thought, if I have to go to this place of the drought, what's going to happen to me? That doesn't sound like a good place to go. Why is God sending me there? How will I live? But God says, I've got this all sorted. You need to go and you need to trust me. So that is exactly what Elijah does. That he trusts him and goes and waits um, in this ravine. And then God provides for him. That he drinks from the brook, the little stream that goes down by the ravine. And birds came birds, ravens came and they brought meat and they brought bread for his breakfast and they fed him. God sent them to feed him, to provide for him in this situation that seems a, doesn't seem very good, does it? Seems like a very difficult situation. Elijah was never hungry, it says, and God provided for him. Now, I want you to have a think, Flora, about what you're getting cross about today, because you don't have everything that Cousin Fern has, but that's because you're different and you've got different things. But have you got lots to be thankful for? Yeah. Now, even in this year that's been so strange, hasn't it, that it might not feel that we have lots and lots of things to be thankful for, but we actually do. We, we can be thankful for our homes for our food, for our schools, for our friends, for our families. And there are so many other things that it's not worth, is it, getting worked up about the things that you don't have because you don't have a limousine, a limo take you to school, but you've got legs and you've got a bike and you get there safely every day. That you don't have as many toys as Cousin Fern, but you've got enough. You've got plenty to keep you busy and your food. You might not have honey and chocolate and Nutella, but you have plenty of food to keep you nice and green and nice and healthy. So it's better, isn't it, to focus on the things that we have got rather than the things we haven't. And that's a really, really good message for us, particularly this year at Harvest, that Elijah could have got worked up that he didn't have great feasts and banquets, but he was thankful that God provided him with what he needed. And that's what we need to do. We need to remember that God provides us with what we need. And even in this hard year, we've had exactly what we need when we've needed it. So, Flora, we're going to work on thankfulness and we're going to be thinking about that a little bit later. And I think Lucy's craft and Dr Alexander's science, in a way, is going to help us think about that today. So should we go and see what Lucy has to say for her craft today? Hello, my name is Lucy and today we are going to make 3D birds. First you need to either download the template from the link in the YouTube description or draw your bird shape. It should look like this. Take your bird template and cut the shapes out. Cut around the edges and cut slits where the dotted lines are. Now using pens, crayons or pencils, decorate your bird. Remember, as it is 3D, you need to colour both sides.
Once your bird is coloured in, you can use additional parts to decorate it further. Use tissue paper, ribbon or feathers to make streamers for the tail. Finally, glue the eyes on and slot your bird together. You have finished making your bird, you can attach string to it and hang it up. We have made a bird today to remind us of how God provided for Elijah by sending the ravens with food and how we need to be thankful all that, for all that God has blessed us with. We hope that you have enjoyed making your bird today. We would love to see your pictures. Have a great week. Bye!
Dear Lord, we thank you for blessing us with your abundance this harvest time and throughout the year. Thank you that you provide for us in so many different ways and that you're always there to help us. We thank you for the gifts of food that we have collected in church today. We ask that you bless those who will receive this food through the work of Hope Nottingham and that through this people will know your love for them. Amen. second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence favor be upon you. what did the mama cow said to the baby cow I don't know, Joshua. What did the mummy cow say to the baby cow? It's past your bedtime. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> what do you call a sleeping bull? I don't know, Joshua. What do you call a sleeping bull? A bulldozer. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Why do cows like to Farmer jokes. Farmer jokes. I don't know, Ben. Why do uh, cows like being told farmer jokes? Because they like being abused. 
Because they like being amused. Very good. They like being amused. Brilliant. Good joke, Ben. <laughs> what do you call a cow? What do you call a cow with no legs? I don't know, Ben. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef! Very good. Ground beef! That's funny. Well done. <laughs> what did the scarecrow say to the other scarecrow? I don't know, Joshua. What did uh, one scarecrow say to the other scarecrow? Hey, man! Hello, my name is Dr. Alexander, mad scientist, and today we are going to make paper planes. All you would need is a A4 sized piece of paper. To make a glider, you need to follow my instructions. If you want to make a different paper plane, look it up on the internet. Begin by folding your paper in half. Open it up. Turn it over and fold a strip at the top. Flip it over and fold the corners into the middle. Fold the top down, then fold it back up. It should look like this. Flip it over and fold the edges into the middle. Unfold the corners back up, then fold into the creases. Now fold the edges back in, like this. You've now got this flap at the top. You need to get this point in this pocket. Now flip it over and smooth out your fold. Now fold it in half. Now fold your wings down. This is your finished glider. You can make many other types of planes too and see how they fly differently. Simples. Now, Dr. Alexander is a very, very strange character, isn't he? But I hope that you've had lots and lots of fun making your paper aeroplanes today. And there's lots of science that goes with paper aeroplanes. Too much for me to explain in detail about air pressure, that there's air resistance and gravity that kind of are in balance and, and a paper aeroplane kind of glides through and about friction on the wings and all sorts. But it's much, much easier for you to have a look and look that up today. But there's something else that we can take away from Dr. Alexander's science, which is that, I don't know, 
I think if we were to get all of the paper aeroplanes that different people have made and line them up, they would all look different. But they would all fly, even just a little bit, they would all still fly. And so in the same way that God provides for us in different ways, our aeroplanes fly in different ways too, don't they? And that's what we need to hang on to today, that we might not have the same as other people. So our lives, like our planes, might look different, but that God is present and that he provides um, and that he has made us all differently because he has a plan and a purpose for each of us today. Now, we would usually have a song at this point, but we've actually put that at the end of the service. So let's carry on with our service and see what we've got next. So Frankie, I think that Flora feels better, doesn't she? She's not cross at Cousin Fern anymore, that she will go and visit her and everything will be okay because I think it's really important to realise that just because we have things that are different to other people and perhaps it might feel like we have less than other people, that that isn't where we should focus our time and our energy, is it? No, we should focus our energy on what we have and give thanks for it. And harvest is a really, really great time to do that. So... Let's spend this week being thankful, of thinking of all of the things that we have to be thankful for. Thinking about our photos that we've seen today. Thinking about our homes and our families and our friends and so many other things beside. And give thanks to God for them. So, I don't think we've got any notices today, Frankie. No, no notices. So shall we end our service in prayer? And then we can carry on worshipping and singing together. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a good, good Father, that you give only good gifts to us. We thank you that even in this year that has been strange and odd and perhaps it hasn't felt like we would have wanted or expected, we thank you that we have so many things that we can count and remember that you have blessed us with. So this week, give us grateful hearts, give us thankful hearts, give us generous hearts to not just hang on to what we have, but to be willing to give it away to help others too. Lord, we pray that by your spirit that you will be with us in everywhere we go. Help us to celebrate who you are and all that you have done for us. Amen. Amen, Frankie. So we're going to go in a minute. So we're gonna say goodbye, but then do hang around because we're going to sing and dance um, and celebrate with Creator God. So should we say bye-bye and then we can sing and dance. Bye-bye. that swim and all the birds that fly were made from your incredible imagination creator god we're singing to the creator god of all the world creator god we celebrate you we celebrate you you spread the ripples through the That grows and all the leaves that fall